Clerk will read the journal for the preceding day. The Minnesota House Chamber is a site of momentous legislative work. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the Chief Clerk. 134 representatives across Minnesota gather here during the legislative session to debate and vote on bills that affect the lives and futures of residents in the state. Appreciate your support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But just like the representatives that create such influence have changed over the years, so has the chamber. Cass Gilbert, the architect of the state capitol, finished the space in 1905 with a specific vision in mind. Throughout the years, his vision was modified, however, sometimes drastically. But today, the chamber is back to its original splendor. If Cass Gilbert was still alive today and he saw the house chamber, what do you think he would think? I think he would smile and I would think he'd say it served us well. Inside the House Chamber goes inside the 1989 to 1990 restoration of the Minnesota House of Representatives Chamber and examines the controversy that surrounds the renovation. The chamber has undergone three significant renovations since it first opened in 1905. One in 1938, Another one in 1969 to 1970, and the last one took place between 1989 and 1990. Some of the changes kept to the original design, but the renovation in 1969 to 1970 took a radical turn away from tradition. The chamber was red carpet, red wall panels, they had drapery hanging from the galleries here. And it really, when you walked in here, it really kind of talked about activity and motion and, and really kind of typified what happened. It was red and gold, it was glaring. By this time we had realized that um, maybe that created some of the animosity that uh, took place in uh, floor debates. It was during the 1989 to 1990 renovation a return to basics occurred. The transformation of the house chamber to its original motif took place due to the planning and hard work of the House Restoration Committee. Representative Mary Murphy sat on the five-member committee. She says the group was guided by early history during the restoration process. And we were trying to restore or recreate as much of the original 1905 chamber as we could. Research was done to investigate what the architect of the original chamber, Cass Gilbert, had envisioned for the space. For example, paint samples were analyzed to determine what the original paint colors on the walls were, and old photographs were examined to uncover the style and location of original lamps and furnishings. You know, that's kind of the fun part of the process is to try to track back, you know, to what things were originally. The restoration didn't come without a few snags, however. Representative Murphy says one of the most controversial issues that came up during the restoration process is what's below my feet, the carpet. According to the representative, there was a movement to replace the red carpet with a blue-green carpet, but others wanted to replace the carpet with the original flooring. They had cause to believe it was a yellow-green colored carpet. As word spread about this restoration project, there was a a young lady, well, she was a young lady in 1905. She was still alive back in the 1980s, and she and some of her friends had snuck into the Capitol and stolen a little swatch of carpet that was for this space in the, in the, in the House of Representatives. And so we actually had the original carpet sample from 1905. Despite a piece of the presumptive original carpet was found to be yellow-green in color, many still favored a blue-green weave. It wasn't until the Capitol Historic Site Manager and the Speaker of the House at the time voiced their opinion that the yellow-green carpet triumphed. Finally, uh, Carolyn Complin from the Historical Society and the Speaker weighed in and um, the idea that we should always go with the historical reality uh, prevailed. Although the carpet was laid down, the carpet controversy hasn't been put to rest. Some skeptics claim there was never even carpet in the original chamber to begin with. Instead, they say it was linoleum. Skeptics claim linoleum makes more sense since spittoons were allowed in the early chamber. Each of the chambers had them, and so that was just a pretty common practice back in, in the 1900s. And it would have been easier to clean up missed shots on linoleum and carpet.
Nonetheless, the Historical Society stands by the yellow-green carpet swatch as a sample of the original flooring. Yeah, that's one of the greatest challenges in our work, authentic authenticating items and knowing that they are indeed what people say they are. So we do a good job now when something comes into our collection of asking the donor for as much evidence or proof of its authenticity as we can get. but not so much maybe 40, 50 years ago. So in this case, again, we'd have to rely pretty much on what's written in the record. And if it says that's what this is, then you know, we have some faith in that. While controversy over the carpet still exists, Representative Mary Murphy is proud of what the House Restoration Committee accomplished more than 20 years ago. From the browns, golds, and greens seen in the chamber, even the green carpet, Representative Murphy says the House chamber has been restored to its original colors and original glory.